guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Abby, and today I'm gonna be crocheting the child from The Mandalorian. People know him mostly as Baby Yoda, and I will probably just be calling him Baby Yoda because that's, in my opinion, the cuter name. I got a shirt with him on it, and the shirt even says the child, but I don't care, his name is Baby Yoda. I had actually already made a Baby Yoda for my dad for Christmas, but I couldn't post that before Christmas because I didn't want my dad to see. And I didn't record myself making him. So yeah, I'm excited because I was sad to part with the first Baby Yoda I crocheted anyway. So now I get to make one for myself. So without much further ado, let's crochet. Hello everybody and welcome to the year 2020. I am very excited about this year. <laughs> am I? I don't know. I hope you guys all had a lovely holiday season. I know I did. Even though by the end of it everyone was pretty much sick. Which always seems to happen around the holiday season. I feel like everyone catches something during the holiday season. In some cases it's better than others. But this year was pretty bad for me in terms of sickness already. Thank you 2020. I got sick on vacation and when I came home back off vacation. So that was fun to deal with. It actually set this video video back quite a bit so that explains why we're so close to the end of the month. To be honest if I had more time I'd be doing the Squirtle evolution right now because that is what I'm supposed to be doing next to finish up the starters but that's probably gonna be more next month. I decided instead of doing all of that I was going to make baby Yoda because I already have his pattern and I needed a video <laughs> so it all works out. The Mandalorian is a great show and probably like everyone else it was the main reason that we got Disney Plus which in it of itself is actually worth it in my opinion. If you haven't seen the show I'm not sure how you could have avoided it but I'm sure you've at least seen that Baby Yoda is taking over memes pretty much every Friday that an episode aired. I'm sure that's gonna also happen when season two comes out just Baby Yoda memes every Friday. But if you haven't seen it, in the show the Mandalorian travels with Baby Yoda and keeps him safe. And that premise kind of reminded me of my vacation because we decided to take our cats along with us. I've actually talked about traveling with cats before briefly on this channel and how in my mind they're more difficult to travel with than dogs, but that was on a plane. And this time we decided that we were going to take a very long road trip. A lot of online sources will tell you that when you have cats in the car, you should always have them in their carriers and that you should stop every once in a while to offer them food and water and the bathroom if they need it. So we actually started out that way with both of our cats in separate carriers but by the end of the trip we kind of had our own system that worked really well and it required only one carrier actually. Our cats really like to snuggle in together I guess especially during stressful situations so they didn't need to be separated out in their own specific carrier for this trip. Arwen is the type of cat that likes to sit in one place for long periods of time so she was totally fine just sitting in her carrier the whole time that we were driving which by the way was somewhere between five to eight hours depending on the day on the way to Florida we had to drive longer during the day because we had to get there in a shorter amount of time than on the way back so on the way to Florida it was mostly eight hour days which was exhausting Kratos much prefers to look around and see what's happening so he didn't really want to stay in the carrier for most of the trip while we were on highways and places where we weren't doing a whole lot of turns we would actually Actually unzip the carrier and let him look around just as long as he was never blocking the view of the driver and he never got into the driver's seat most of the time though he would sit in the carrier with it unzipped just so that he could you know stick his face out if he wanted to or he was on top of the carrier and he would sleep that way. But yeah, for the most part, he was pretty happy with having the freedom to move around the car, even if he didn't use that freedom very often. So both of them were actually really good in the car, sort of better than I was hoping actually, because the last thing you want is to have a couple of cats meowing really loudly the whole trip because they want out of their carrier. I was kind of worried that that sort of thing was gonna happen and that we wouldn't be able to drive as much during each day because the cats wouldn't be able to handle 
handle it. But that never was really an issue. And they never really wanted to do anything except for sleep in the car. And since we had so much stuff in the car, we couldn't actually sleep in the car and we weren't really planning on doing that anyway. So there were hotels involved. I don't know how many of you guys have planned to look for pet friendly hotels or hotels where you can take cats, but it's kind of a pain. I ended up looking into all the reservations for each place that we were stopping at. And although it's never really hard to find a hotel that will take a pet, it all depends really on how much you're willing to spend, which is kind of the case for hotels in general. But what I mean is a lot of these places will charge you a standard 10, 15, 20 dollar per pet per night fee. And when you have two cats that you're traveling with, that can significantly add up, almost to the point where you're paying the same amount for a pet or for pets as you would be for the room in general. So you're kind of like paying a double fee. And I understand that because pets bring in a lot more potential for a hotel room to be dirty or messy, but that fee is just for getting into the room. Then there's a separate worry that if they mess something up even more, you're gonna have to pay an even bigger cleaning fee. Sometimes around $100 is what they'll quote you. And actually at some of these places when you walk to the front desk, they'll tell you that if you don't let them know you have a pet, they'll charge you an even bigger fee. So it's always important to tell them, yes, I have a pet. I was lucky enough to find a lot of places that didn't charge a pet fee, but sometimes it's just unavoidable depending on where you're stopping. So anyway, in most of these rooms, luckily, they have a ring around the bed that goes to the floor so the cats can't get under the bed. The unfortunate thing is the ring doesn't go all the way around for some reason. The barrier just kind of stops five inches before the wall on either side, leaving a perfect opportunity for cats to squish themselves back there. An opportunity that Arwen took twice. She loves to hide, and I believe somehow she's got some kind of sonar when it comes to small places that are hard for us to get her out of. The first time she got herself back there, I had turned around for just a minute and then I saw her tail disappear. And I freaked out because I actually didn't realize that there was that five inch gap on either side. I had just gone around and sort of kicked the side of the bed and thought, oh, there's a barrier. She'll be fine if I set her on the bed for a second while I set up the playpen. But no, she jams herself back there. But luckily I'm able to coax her out with some food because she hadn't eaten really anything because she refused to eat in the car. The second time though, Matthew and I actually had to pull the whole bed away from the wall to get her. And needless to say, she totally needed a bath after that. I don't think they ever clean back behind those beds, pretty much like ever. So it was super dusty. There was like a sugar packet. I don't know. There's There was just so much stuff back there. It was disgusting. But besides those two incidents, she stayed in her pen that we had actually specifically bought for these hotel stays. I honestly don't know what we would have done without this pen because it kept the cats in a convenient location, except for sometimes when we would let the cats look around the room while we were setting it up. But besides that, it was really good to have and it was an amazing place for them to feel safe in these rooms that they didn't recognize or understand. Kratos spent most of his hotel nights also in this pen with Arwen because we were able to keep a litter box in there. So they were both in there with their litter box and their food and their water. But after staying in the hotels for a little while, we decided he was good enough not to get lost in a hotel room like Arwen would and that he could stay out of the pen so that he could sleep on the bed if he wanted to, which he did, and he was pretty good about it. We had another litter box so that we wouldn't have Arwen escaping. That's always the worry with her because she likes to just jam herself into places and hide and not be cooperative. So it was important for us to have this playpen. And I cannot stress enough how important this pen was for us. And I would highly recommend it if you're planning on traveling with cats because it is just an amazing tool to have to keep your cats in one location. It made me feel a lot safer because if they were zipped up into it and room service came in to clean up the room while you're outside of it, the cats won't get out and you don't want a cat getting lost in a different state. And like I said it was also a place for them to feel safe. Even with all the stress of traveling with animals, it was a very good vacation 
that I wish I didn't have to come back from. <laughs> you know, being from Oregon, I was never really used to going to the beach in January because... I mean, you can go during summer and it's still like 52 degrees over there and the water's freezing cold. But actually, while I was on vacation, we went to the beach and it was so fun. I don't remember the last time I've gone to the beach or the last time I've seen so many seagulls. It was crazy. Like if you held out a French fry, all these seagulls would flock towards you just like the Alfred Hitchcock movie. And I'm not joking. Here's a little clip to show you how ridiculously scary this flock of seagulls was. I feel like the longer you spend on vacation, the more you don't wanna come back from vacation. In some ways, it's good to be back. I am happy to be back here to have all of my equipment to make videos again. I am hoping to continue with my last year's resolution, which is to make at least one video a month. I want to continue doing that. But at any rate, I'm back now. I should be getting the rest of those starter Pokemon done. Everything is going back to normal. Baby Yoda is looking done, so let's get into those glam shots. Here's Baby Yoda. I am absolutely thrilled with how he turned out. I'm so happy that I have one of my own now. As far as accuracy goes, he's not like 100% accurate, but he's cute and that's really all you can ask for. If you guys have any other suggestions of things that I should crochet as like side projects or whatever, please let me know because I absolutely love coming up with patterns and making things like this guy. But anyway, thank you guys for coming and sitting and listening to me talk. I know sometimes I can get a bit rambly. My sister Olivia says that it's like she's hanging out with me. So it's always fun to come and hang out with you for a little while. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.